Any day spent fishing is considered a good one, but for 11-year-old Vinnie Pusateri, this free trip to Lake Powell was the result of doing the right thing at the right time. I got drawn for a deer hunting in the Kayabab, and they were protecting the California condors, and so if we put turned in a gut pile, then there was a raffle for a fishing trip, and I won the raffle, and now I'm here. Vinny, his dad Peter, and sister Hannah spent the day on the lake with Chris right Parrish of the Peregrine Fund, the lead agency the reel, in the recovery of the California right condor. I think anytime you get to, well, especially with the trip like this, meet new people, meet people that mean something to me just because of the effort that they made on the Kaibab, and to see it be a young man like that and to hear the story about their hunt, to get to meet them, come out and spend the day on the water. Talking to that young man and watching him the way he fished is everything that's good about the world in the future. I mean, that, that, that lights my fire because it's, it's that kind of next generation that's going to make this thing work and it's going to make all conservation work. The California condor is the largest land bird in North America with a wingspan of over nine feet. The birds were facing extinction when in 1987, the last 22 living in the wild were captured. Those birds were used to begin a captive breeding program that now numbers more than 400 birds, about half of which are in wild populations in Arizona, California, Utah, and Mexico. In 1996, condors from the program were released near Vermilion Cliffs in northern Arizona. And though their numbers continue to rise, there are still obstacles to overcome in their recovery. The Arizona population is doing great. Um, constantly growing uh, with some setbacks throughout the year. Um, our major obstacle in establishing this population is lead poisoning. But the birds are doing great. They're answered all the major questions that we had in the early days of the program. Will they find their own food? Will they find their own nesting sites? Will they nest? Um, they've answered all those questions and they're, they're doing great. If we can just keep on reducing lead exposure in their range, uh, we are well on our way to a full recovered species. Lead exposure is the number one threat to condors. These huge birds are scavengers that rely entirely on animal remains they find in the wild, which is why the Voluntary Lead Reduction Program has been so important to their recovery. The big focus of the Condor Program is to get the lead out of the field. What these people did that we took today, um, they shot a deer with a lead bullet, and then they took the effort to pack the gut pile to us at our check station. And for that, we put their name into a drawing, and they won this as a raffle prize. We had several prizes this last year, and this was one of the, one of the cool ones that we got to go and enjoy together. Along with the raffle prizes, Arizona Game and Fish offered hunters who drew a deer tag on the Kaibab a coupon for one box of non-lead ammunition. The program is supported in part by the Heritage Fund. Since the early 2000s is when we first identified lead on the Kaibab as being a problem for condors. And immediately following that, we shared our, those data that we had collected in the field with the Game and Fish, and they started the program in 2003, educating the hunters and offering them all the information from all the scientific research that we have done, and then um, publishing that in the hunting regulations and beginning to ask people to use non-lead and sweetening the pot by actually offering a free box. In addition to that, the gut pile program, um, painfully called the gut pile raffle, makes it sound like you're gonna win a gut pile, but the gut pile raffle uh, was an effort again to offer people another opportunity to participate. And now that the condors are expanding north into Utah, um, Division of Natural Resources in Utah is doing exactly the same thing, modeled after Arizona's program. So those are the efforts currently in place. 
Surveys show that about 90% of deer hunters took one of the two measures to reduce the amount of spent lead ammunition in the Condor's core range, and the efforts are paying off. In 2014, there were more than 70 condors in Arizona. And then once you have the head, I'll set them down. Okay. 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 Set them in your lap. On this day, three new birds are being added to the wild population from breeding sites outside of Arizona. Before their release, the Condor team attaches identification numbers as well as transmitters so they can track the birds. We have uh, two birds that are two years of age and one bird that is one year of age. Uh, we supplement, it's a reintroduction, so we, we have wild breeding. We've had wild fledged birds ever since 2003, every year, and then throughout the year we release um, captive bred birds to to build up a, a wild population. We release uh, usually 6 to 12, 15 birds a year. Condors generally lay one egg every other year, so their reproduction rate is slow. This fledgling's wing motion is a signal to its parents that it's time for a meal. But right now, it doesn't seem to be making much of an impression on the adults. Later this year, the Condor team will capture the young bird so it can be fitted with its own transmitter and ID number. These birds can fly 200 miles a day. Um, a lot of the core range is right here in the Vermilion Cliffs where we are. Uh, the southern extent of their range all the way to the south from the Grand Canyon. Uh, we've had birds fly to Flaming Gorge, Wyoming, which is beyond their range, but a juvenile bird uh, could catch the right wind and follow the right eagle anywhere. But roughly, um, we always say Flagstaff to St. George and everywhere in between. Condors are very social and inquisitive birds, and they can often be spotted in groups near Lee's Ferry, where Navajo Bridge makes an attractive, if not sometimes precarious, roosting spot. Still, it's an impressive sight when the birds open their giant wings to catch the warming rays of the early morning sun or soar on the thermals rising from the canyon floor. A huge cooperative effort has gone into reintroducing and maintaining these birds, and none is more important than the hunters who are helping to reduce their exposure to lead. It's so simple. and. Uh... The great thing is that Arizona has completely embraced the voluntary program. There is no thought of a law to make it where we're not going, where we're going to ban lead ammunition, which a lot of people are afraid of. California did that. We're not California. Our hunters have proven to us that through education and understanding that they can change on their own without being told that they must do something. We've had for the last seven years, 85 to 90 percent of our hunters have participated in lead reduction actions to save our condors. Meanwhile, back at Lake Powell, the Pusateri family is wrapping up a great day on the lake, thanks to Vinny. Daddy outfished his dad, the guide, and the game and fish guys. <laughs> so, well, that's true. yeah, yeah, we had a great time. <laughs> you know, the more people we can communicate with and let them know who we are, what we're about in conservation, and uh, when the hunters and fishermen find out that, that we're just like they are and we've just set ourselves to this goal of recovering the condor, they're right there with us. It's just a matter of how do you contact the masses in that way. And this is a good way to do that, by taking people fishing and hopefully they'll talk about it.